I have taken the liberty to title this address, Setting the Pace for Relationality. I am delighted and honored, yet humbled, standing here to offer this little speech, welcoming you all to 2021 New Year Lecture, to be delivered by Professor Dr. Ute Femina. On behalf of the organizers of this event, the Africa Multiple Cluster of Excellence in African Studies, University of Beirut, and all the four cluster centers. I welcome everyone present from their well-deserved holiday and winter break. Despite a promising 2020, heralded by the successful New Year lecture of the Africa Multiple Cluster of Excellence in January 2020, delivered by the Dean of the Cluster, Professor Dr. Rudiger Sisman, there were some upsets immediately afterwards. In the wake of the outbreak of corona pandemic last year, there was widespread anxiety and to some extent disillusionment about the future of research and scholarship within the cluster. As in other areas of scholarship, African studies was rattled by the effects of the pandemic. Field trips were kept on hold, conferences were either canceled or abridged, cluster mobility was virtually non-existent, scholars were frustrated some universities had to make ST adjustments to administration, learning, and research, while others in Africa had to grapple with unfamiliar modes of intellectual interactions. However, thanks to the resilience fostered by modern technology and commitment of staff and associates of the cluster at the University of Beirut and the cluster centers, some programs of the cluster and four centers went on almost seamlessly. Now we begin another year be clouded by what 2021 will bring forth, yet full of hope and promises of a better year. Today's lecture, titled Polyrhythmic Gestures, Relational Perspectives on, from, verbal, audiovisual, and performance arts across African continent, is, will be delivered by Professor Dr. Ute Fendler, signaling the commencement of another academic year of the cluster. Professor Dr. Fendler, who is Vice Dean of Internationalization and Public Engagement of African Multiple Cluster of Excellence, he is a specialist in Francophone literature and film in West Africa and the Indian Ocean. She holds the Chair of Romance and Comparative Literature and Cultural Studies at the University of Beirut. Professor Fendler has also published extensively on relational aspects of international phenomenon, along with lecture-linked curation of dance and music performances. In this lecture, Professor Fendler brings her cumulative expertise to bear when she discusses the polyvalent dimensions of relationality. She does this by identifying approaches to multiple and complex ways of being in the world, drawn from Gleason's poetics of relation, Deleuze's polyrhythm, Benitez Rojo's concept of chaos, and Braithwaite's dialectics. She engages these approaches in the light of concepts proposed in the current reading of Senghor's idea of living. Drawing examples from verbal, visual, and performance arts, Fendler also shows in this lecture works expressing the entanglements between theory and practice. Illustration of these entanglements will be brought out from the poem songs of Rahari Manana from Madagascar, film music from Musasene Absa from Senegal, and dance calligraphy. Whilst Fendler takes us through this intellectual excursion on relationality, it is my hope that as the year rolls on, discourses on polyrhythmicity will open new vistas for African studies research. One that will stimulate conscious and genuine exploration of African intellectual monuments, as well as reflexive reorganization of Africa's intellectual resources in ways that will be understood and appreciated by modern humankind. Once again, I welcome you to a year of promise and hope of a redemption from the outgoing year. I thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and Happy New Year. It is a privilege for me to present today's speaker, Professor Dr. Ute Fentler. 
And if you know how wide-ranging and global Professor Dr. Ute Fenler's network is, you can only consider such an opportunity as singular. Professor Dr. Ute Fenler is the Vice Dean of the Cluster of Excellence Africa Multiple in charge of internationalization and public engagement. Her role has been specifically crucial in establishing and enhancing collaboration and, uh, with and amongst the African cluster centers as a key component of the cluster's research agenda. She has been one of the leading figures in African studies research at the University of Bayreuth for more than a decade now. Professor Fenler did her PhD studies at the University of Bayreuth and defended in 1992 uh, with a thesis on the Caribbean author called uh, Maris Conde. She then moved to Burkina Faso where she worked as an assistant professor of German and comparative studies at the University of the Ouagadougou. In 1997, she joined the Zaland University as a research assistant while doing her habilitation on literary text and reports of Spanish travelers to South America in the 18th century. In 2006, she completed the process and successfully applied for the Chair of Romance Literatures and Comparative Studies at the University of Bayreuth that same year. No sooner did she arrive in Bayreuth that duty called her to assume leadership roles in the research and administrative landscape of African studies in Bayreuth. She has won many research and leadership uh, and administrative uh, caps, all of which we cannot outline here for the sake of time. Just to name a few, beginning with her position as the Dean of BIGSAS, the Bayreuth International Graduate School of African Studies, uh, as the very first Dean, a position which she, she held from 2007 to 2009. After that, she was elected director of the Institute of African uh, Studies, uh, uh, a position which she held from 2011 to 2015. And later on, as the deputy director of Bayreuth Academy of Advanced African Studies from 2015 to 2019. Since then, since 2010, uh, she, uh, she has been representative of the partner universities of Bixas, uh, universities based in Rabat, Kotono, Eldoret, Mapoto, Durban, and Addis Ababa. Since 2011, uh, Ute Fendler has been a member of the Presidential Commission for International Affairs. Professor Dr. Ute Fendler has remained relentless in her field of research, which includes literatures and film cultures of the Caribbean, West Africa, the Indian Ocean, and South, Amer South America. Uh, comparative romance literature and film studies, iconographies, transmediality, popular culture, and cosmopolitanism. She is currently the co-leader of two cluster research projects, namely Black Atlantic Revisited, as well as multiple artworks, multiple Indian Ocean. She has remained uh, prolific in her research output with a long list of publications to her credit uh, in English, German, French, Portuguese, and Spanish languages. In fact, one could say that um, polyrhythmicity and polyphony are not just research topics for Professor Dr. Ute Fenler, but also um, could be considered to be her ways of being in the world, uh, so to say. Uh, I would name just a few publications uh, for the sake of time. I won't, name, I won't name everything, but just about three publications to her name. Uh, last year, 2020, she published an article titled Lucifer Filmmaking in the Realm of Transnational African Cinemas from Global, to, from global Ethnic to Global Aesthetics. Uh, published in a collection titled Contemporary Lusophone African Film, Transnational Communities and Alternative Modernities. This article was, has been published by Routledge uh, uh, in 2020, which um, ironically happens to be one of her most prolific and productive years as a researcher, a year which was uh, difficult for almost everyone, globally speaking. Uh, secondly, I would mention an article which um, wages in um, with regard to a debate, an, on, an ongoing and current debate on world literatures. And as we learned recently from Professor Stockhammer's talk, 
uh, Earth Literatures. She published an article titled Französische Sprachige Literaturen, Literatur Monde oder Welt Literaturen, in a collection titled Gegenwart Literatur, Welt Literatur, published by Transcript uh, Bielfeld in 2019. Uh, lastly, uh, she published in 2018 in Munich uh, with, the, with the publishing house uh, AVM. Uh, a collection of essays titled Archaeology of the Future, African Cinema and Imaginary. This is published, this is co-published with uh, Aminata Mbai and Vivian Azarian. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, enjoy today's talk. Thanks very much. Good afternoon and welcome to this virtual meeting to discuss some concepts of the cluster. Last year, the Dean of the Cluster, Rudiger Sesemann, presented the New Year Lecture on Multiplicity one of the key concepts of the cluster. This year it is my honor and duty to give the New Year Lecture. To start the year together with the cluster members and friends, I selected another key concept, namely relationality, with which we had, had, have had in mind shifts of perspectives from various themes and units towards the relation between them, be they in terms of convergences, ruptures, parallels, focusing more on what happens in between. As my background, is literature and comparative cultural studies, I would like to draw on examples from my field to illustrate the concept of relationality and of polyrhythm, which is, in my perspective, closely connected to each other. In the cluster Multiple Africa, with close to 50 research projects, whereby researchers do collect data and also work on the shift towards multiplicity, I think relationality is one of the contexts, concepts where the different approaches can find a meeting point. In this collaborative process, arts, be it literature, music, dance, or other forms, can be one way of making visible this process of coming into being and thereby <coughs> contribute to approach the intervals. Therefore, I hope that at least some of the examples I will give in my lecture could be inspiring also for the audience as arts can be considered to be a tool of transdisciplinary mediation. But before starting my lecture, I would like to say that I first imagined this moment as a very interactive one with some artists who would share their approach to relationality and polyrhythm via calligraphy, poems and music. Unfortunately, this is not possible due to the pandemic. Let me therefore start with a piece by the Goan artist Subot Kerka entitled Lockdown. It shows a sculpture of the lung made out of fiber covered with thorns of the trifala tree. The two parts are connected with an iron bar in the form of a cross, blocked with a heavy padlock. I cannot go into details now, but the physical pain and suffering by the, one could say, crucified lung and the bar reaching out into the void captures the feeling of the pandemic lockdown in an, immo in, in an immobilized and eternalized moment of that includes physical and mental suffering that affects the observer. With this sculpture, we are already right in the middle of the themes I would like to talk about today. Knowledge produced by art and the different ways of understanding by aesthetic procedures selecting examples that convey the concepts of relationality and polyrhythm. <clears throat> Subot's sculpture also allows me to invite you to follow my reflections on the concepts based on associations creating relations between concepts and art, opening the padlock for the time being via this virtual platform. And I hope we can come back to some of the dialogues between art, form, art forms and concepts meeting physically in Bayreuth or somewhere else in the near future. My lecture will have three major parts. <laughs> First, a kind of lengthy introduction about the connections between the concepts of relationality, polyrhythm and arts, and how all of this is linked to the modes of knowledge production, as I hope that this might inspire discussions across disciplines. Second, I will talk about arts and mediation, and use the novel The, Gri the Griot of Painting by Guadeloupean writer Ernest Pépin as an example. The third part will deal with polyrhythm and aesthetics, using a poem song by the Malagasy artist Rahri Manana and a film by the Senegalese cineast Musa Sen Absa. I would like to start with taking up the re-readings of Leopold Sedar Senghor's writing on African arts by two philosophers, namely Suleiman Bashir Dyanya and Babakam Mbaidiop. 
It was striking to me that the notion of rhythm was so central in these texts, as Sango has come back regularly to the notion of rhythm in African arts over the decades of his writing, that Diani considers to be a philosophy of African art. Diani uses one quote to bring forth the central idea of rhythm and arts, and her quote, What is rhythm? It is the architecture of being, the internal dynamism that gives it a form the system of waves that emanates from, from it reaching out to the others. It is the pure expression of the vital force. Rhythm is the vibrating shock, the power that moves us deep down in our being by the senses. The rhythm expresses itself in using the most basic and material ways, lines, surfaces, colors, volumes in architecture, sculpture and painting, accents and poetry and music, movements and dance. But in doing so, rhythm arranges all these concrete things, giving it an orientation towards the light of the spirit." End of quote. According to Senghor, rhythm is inherent to literally everything, so that it is rhythm that affects the other, steers emotions and actions. The intuitive mode of sharing knowledge is central to a holistic understanding of the world. Dianya also draws attention to the importance of the interval, we might also call it in between, when all is based on rhythm. He explains that one would usually try to think about a question or problem by identifying different aspects using the raison œil, the reason I, which means the intellect keeping and observing an elliptical distance towards the object. Senga suggests, as Dianya underlines, the raison étrante, literally apprehension by embracement. He describes this approach as an act of intuition that apprehends the other as a whole rather than in analytical pieces. The method would be to feel the flux of the other, to dance rather than to think the other or the question. This might sound odd at first sight, but Senghor's ideas explained in the words of Gianni suggest a different approach to know and explain the world. Arts is but one means to get closer to the meaning of the shift. In the following, I will draw on other theories that help us to get closer to the apprehension by, by embracement based on rhythm. To build a bridge with the introduction, I would like to follow some inspiration from the writings of Erin Manning, who is a philosopher and artist herself based in Montreal. In her most recent book on the pragmatics of the useless, she seems to speak to our quest for the interval, the in-between, that might have been neglected in relations. And I quote, <clears throat> The German Übersehen, overseeing, seems as important as the unseeing at the heart of the imperceptible call for by the infra-thin. Übersehen does not really mean to oversee, it means to miss, to overlook. But this rift being see between seeing and looking is important, and it is here that the infra-thin will reveal its potential as that which is always more than. What is not seen within the seeable is more than appearance. It is not a question of finding something hidden, but of making operative the minor gestures that sidle major tendencies." End of quote. These ideas of Manning seem to speak to the cluster's ideas as we started in the very beginning with a rather simple observation that life worlds are not only growing more and more complex due to the acceleration of exchange and encounters on all levels, local, regional to global, and in all fields from religious, social, cultural, political to literature, but, also, but are also begging the question about how to approach this complexity of a multi-layered co-presence of a large multitude of phenomena and practices. The concepts that are used range depending on the focus, from multiplicity, diversity to syncretism, hybridity, poly, multi, intertransculturalism, as well as concepts that rather try to grasp the encounter as such as tensions, contradictions, as well as synergy, convergence or relationality. One focus should be directed towards the in-between, on the nature of the relation and what it would reveal about the larger context. Manning succinctly speaks about this in between as follows, and I quote, What if we were to posit relation as key to experience? Relation is the making apparent of a third space opened up for experience in the making. This third space or interval is active with the tendencies of interaction but is not limited to them. In another of her works titled Relationscape, she links the idea of relation with movement and body, and I quote, it places the emphasis on the imminence of movement moving, how movement can be felt before it actualizes. 
pre-acceleration refers to the virtual force of movements taking place, taking form. Excuse me. End of quote. This quote echoes Senghor's reflection on rhythm and knowledge. It is important to grab hold of the intertwinement of movement, body, thought, and the potential that an action or concept can emerge from the in-between. Manning says, the event or the actual occasion is pulled into experience its force of actuation tied to what Whitehead calls the data of the occasion. These data are not objects or substances, but relational fields in the parsing. <clears throat> In the cluster multiple Africa with close to 50 research projects whereby researchers do collect data, also working on the shift towards multiplicity and relationality, I think relationality is one of the concepts, concepts where the different approaches can find a meeting point. In this collaborative process, art, speed, literature, music, dance or other forms can be one way of making visible this process of coming into being and thereby contribute to approach the intervals. Art positions itself as the means, par excellence, of capturing the interval, the process and the making. This echoes in a certain way the idea of gestures propounded by Willem Flusser, for whom gestures are symbolic representations and something other than reason. One of the gestures he is talking about is painting, besides filming, writing, but also making and destroying. His idea of gestures is very close to Manning's coming into being, as he speaks of a free movement, free in the sense that, is, that a satisfactory explanation of gestures can only come through its meaning that is produced by reaching out to the future and the process of making. He pleads for a holistic understanding of the gesture as a combination of motion, thought and concept, an idea that we have already seen in the thoughts of Senghor. With Flusser there comes in the idea of the self-critical quality of the gesture, and I quote, the self-critical level of the gesture is so closely coordinated with all the other levels of meaning that the whole gesture is imbued with it. In this sense, each phase of the gesture is autoanalytic. The gesture not only reaches from the present into the future, but also brings an anticipated future back into the present and returns it to the future. The gesture is constantly monitoring and reformulating its own meaning." End of quote. <coughs> A good example for the various approaches mentioned up to now, like the thought moves the body, moving, <laughs> movement taking form, with a reflexive impetus could be calligraphy, as it is a practice between the gesture of writing and the gesture of painting, which is at the same time a relational moment between thinking and movement. I ask Mohamed Mahouch, Mahouch, a calligrapher from Fez, Morocco, to write down relationality and polyrhythm for us. Let's have a look at him writing relationality.
In an interview, he explained that it is not just about putting down letters on a paper, but also about pre-actualizing the thought that comes into being in the movement of writing. What we have just seen would be called a space of imagination by the German philosopher Sibylle Kremer, who highlights the importance of the basic elements of drawing writing. With each line there comes into being a space of imagination, a procedure of bringing something into being with and behind the line. She speaks of the world in between the graphics as an instance of mediation between an idea and its realization. The line or the drawing or diagram is an after image of the idea and a pre-concept of realization. Further on, she states that the real can only be pictured in a realistic way with the help of imagination. <clears throat> in this argument, she draws on Derrida, who rejects the idea of the mimetic nature of visual arts and underlines the deep heterogeneity that divides the object to be represented and the drawing line, is, and the drawing line especially if there is a model for the picture. What happens in the drawing is the unseen for Derrida. The fact that there is something not yet seen in, behind the visible, is the precondition that it can be made visible in an artistic process of making, of coming into being. Let me give another example of calligraphy. One that is part of a project of the dance of calligraphy that illustrates this coming into being and the collaboration of the moving body and thought.
At this point, we might dare to say with Derrida and Manning that arts can make visible the invisible, and with Senghor that arts allow us to embrace the visible and the invisible at the same time. Arts would be a method, a method of mediation, as the philosopher Jean Godefroy Bidima explained. And I quote, Understanding African arts supposes that one takes into consideration the notions of mediation and of relation. The artwork <clears throat> connects the artist to his community and also disconnects him at the same time, as creating also means transgressing. If African art is the transmission, transition and transformation, its actual mission proposes that the only valuable education in arts and history would see its sites of production and reception as trans-situs, transversing spaces." End of quote. Let me give you an example for this process of mediation of arts in the novel The Griot of Painting by Ernest Pippa from Guadeloupe. The title announces a close link between verbal and visual culture. It is a fictional biography of the painter Jean-Michel Basquiat, born in New York in 1960. His parents are from Puerto Rico and Haiti. Pépin presents the artist as a mediator between time spaces, who could be a model for the raison empreinte. Gianni spoke of the apprehension of the world by embracing it. Basquiat started with graffiti before he painted his impressions of his life in New York, of his heritage of different origins and experiences of racism and exclusion, often in an, improv in an improvised way on walls and on used clothes. The novel retraces the most important moments in his life as an artist, until the moment when he becomes a star after having met Andy Warhol. The text mixes freely historical data with the imagination of the author, as well as with reflections on episodes that appear like dreams, as if the author could contact Basquiat and therefore speak with and for him. The historical figure serves as the space of enunciation and turns into a mediator between the physical experience of the all world in the sense of glissant and the reflection on the case of the Meta Archipelago mentioned by the Cuban author Benitez Rojo, who imagined the Caribbean islands as the Milky Way, the cosmos as a spiral like chaos. The Caribbean islands mean to him a cosmos and an ongoing movement during which some objects appear in the light and others disappear. The artist Basquiat incorporates the entanglement of all elements in the world, becoming the nodal point where all trajectories meet in the middle of the chaos. His work turns into a mediating mechanism between the complexity of the chaotic world and the intuition of an artist. Confronted with the chaos of the world, he questions his own position. And I quote, What is life if not an adornment or posture, an incomprehensible poetic carved into death? Tiny mechanism, tiny chemistry, small conglomerate of cells that we have baptized pretentiously, I. End of quote. His role as a medium becomes even more evident in the paragraph on his life in New York, and I quote, There's no time, no space, only the vertigo that links me to the universe, overwhelming speed, and the great pleasure of gravitational force. I took my skin off, I laid down my body, all seemed lighter, and I traverse infinite space. Colors that waltz, a myriad of colors, music of vivid colors. End of quote. This near ecstatic moment describes an experience that suspends laws of physics and of aesthetics. In the moment when the artist becomes a medium or a mediator, he is liberated from all physical and biological constraints and thus becomes a spirit, a poetic medium. Another major narrative line is the music. Basquiat says that jazz has never been just music, but rather an aspiration for totality. Pépin, the author, creates a continuous storyline based on music that is also a mediator that gives access to the secret poetics and rhythms of the world. In this way, Basquiat becomes a griot, the master of the spoken word, of memory and of knowledge. Furthermore, the character of the artist is the incarnation of the islands, space in between, where multiple heritages meet as his grandparents saw him as the homecoming land, an extraordinary land where the burning bush of his hair was growing and the dark smoke of his skin. End of quote. He therefore becomes a floating island between various poles, the nodal point which all trajectories of the particles traverse. Poetics would be the only way to comprehend this chaos by a synthetic approach. I quote, I will be language, 
I will have words that are colors, colors that will be screaming. And in my screaming there will be memories of islands of volcanic violences, of stitched scars, explosive laughters. End of quote. Pépin characterizes Basquiat as a stranger who is and is not part of the communities that he traverses. He functions as a convergent point for all possible perspectives so that he could develop a meta-reflection inspired by lived experiences. The artist is the mediator, the relational island that creates a link between different elements in order to facilitate the encounters in the all world. With this novel, the author shows us one example of the lived embracement of the world via arts. Now we'll come to the second part, relationality, polyrhythm and aesthetics. After mediation and art, I would like to turn now towards the concept of polyrhythm. It brings us back to the writings by Sengo on rhythm we discussed in the beginning. Sengo would describe Baoulé's statu statues to come up with a notion of asymmetrical parallelism as the two sides of a face or body are never completely symmetrical. The surface of the object is made of forms and lines that create rhythm so that from the slight differences in symmetry can emerge punctuations a change of rhythm. Job quotes Grégoire Biogo, who defines this concept in his History of African Philosophy as, fel as follows, and I quote, A form of repetition, non-repeated, a variation of unpredictable character, infinitely subversive, with some effects of rhythmic emergencies, uh, em <laughs> emergences. The asymmet asymmetrical parallelism evokes a phenomenon of non-planned eruptions and a chaotic order which is incalculable as lava flows after volcanic eruption." End of quote. This concept is of interest for us, as it could also be applied to the concept of the interval. It seems that, because of the imbalance, there is a small rupture, a moment of hesitation, that also influences the impression of the artistic object. The German philosopher Gernot Böhme proposed a new aesthetics based on the concept of atmospheres or ambiences, which would describe the floating in between. The object would no longer be considered as a being limited in its form, but there is an ambience that emanates from every object which reaches out to the observer, affects the subject. Furthermore, he suggests to speak of ecstasies. And I quote, Instead of properties, therefore, I speak of ecstasies, that is, ways of stepping outside oneself. The difference between properties and ecstasies can be clarified by the antithesis between convex and concave. A surface which, in relation to the body it encloses, is convex, is concave in relation to the surrounding space. End of quote. The asymmetric parallelism can also be understood as an ecstatic moment that affects the spectator and connects with them. It creates the interval that puts thought into movement. If we turn to Deleuze, he suggests reflections on the course that he links with the idea of case and milieus, space-time blocks, as he puts it. In Mille Plateau, he starts the chapter on the course with the story of a child that si sings to fight his fear on his way home in the dark. This would be a practice that draws a circle around that uncertain and fragile center to organize a limited space. He develops this image into a reflection on space and belonging, all linked to aspects of rhythms and milieus. And I quote, From chaos, milieus and rhythms are born. Chaos is not with, without its own directional components, which are its own ecstasies. We have seen elsewhere how all kinds of milieus, each defined by a component, slide in relation to one another, over one another. Every milieu is vibratory. In other words, a block of space-time constituted by the periodic repetition of the component. End of quote. This passage seems to link directly with the ideas of nexuses and asymmetric parallelism as well as polyrhythm, as he speaks of the repetition of the components which, however, will every time be different from the moment before. The creative production of knowledge via music and dance, sound and body, might be seized in this in-between of sound and sense, or with Deleuze, the intermediary milieu of energy sources and actions perceptions, which we sometimes try to put into rhythms or in the noise as ever-present, flexible components of life worlds and life knowledge. To summarize this part on rhythm, we could say that rhythm is a basic constituent of each practice. 
Taking these reflections as an inspiration, we come back to shifting the perspective towards the interval that we discussed in the beginning. Let me give you two examples. The first one is a poem by Rahari Manana that could make us feel the rhythm and is an invitation to embrace his way of seeing the world. The second one is based on a film by Musa Sen Absa that intertwines storytelling and rhythm. The plot seems to make the method of apprehension by embracement more concrete as one can always rely on the story as an example taken from real life. My first example is a poem <clears throat> Yasengo, as well as his, as his interpreters, see the rhythm as evidence in poems, being then based on tone, melody and rhythm. I would like to quote an aphorism by the French poet Paul Valéry that condenses the nature of a poem, and I quote, The poem is a long hesitation between the sound and the sense. This aphorism underlines the interval, in this case, between the produced sound of the written or spoken words and the signification that will emanate from them. <coughs> Rari Manana is a playwright, poet and novelist from Madagascar, who often accompanies his lectures and performances with music. He also uses elements of traditional forms of speech like Gabari or Haintini and insists on the fact that, and I quote, the word will possess the body of the poet. This is the reason why writing should not be fixed, and a partition does not really make sense. The movement has to happen, the emotions have to be the notes. The writing has to be permeated by the words. This is the reason why I have not used punctuation in this text. I wanted to create the fluidity of spoken words of the breath." End of quote. <clears throat> Let's watch a part of his performance of the poem entitled Ton, which means so much, but, but also in this way. He plays the valia that enters into a dialogue with the words in French and in Malagasy, creating a polyphonic rhythm. Sable, 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 sable. L'infini fut éphémère, et l'éphémère fut sans fin. Hein. Tracer est creuser l'oubli Car lire c'est épouser l'abîme Où le sens trop vaste s'étend hors de l'étincelle Écrire est une illusion bien réelle Où le corps s'allie à l'esprit pour repousser le doute Où le souffle, le souffle se mêle Et s'entremêle à l'espace pour, pour usurper le champ de l'inachevé Ai-je bien lu ou simplement inventé Ai-je bien entendu ou simplement rêvé Qu'ai-je bien pris des dieux Du silence, le bruissement de la solitude et la racine du vent L'amassement des âmes et leurs paroles pavant les étendues Comme des oiseaux bas qui quadrillent les origines Comme des oiseaux bas qui se mêlent au filament du vent et au rhizome des souffles Je tiens du silence la racine du vent Un entremêlement de soupirs et de désirs un fouillis harmonieux de tendances et de fugues Une agrégation de gestes et de mouvements Les uns plus splendides et plus indépendants que les autres Et d'une émotion Je frémis Je frémis d'une fuite Le vent tressaille et m'effiloche c'est un vent de désir Attiré par l'étrange Je qui ne choisis pas vraiment M'en vais ailleurs Pour habiter d'autres possibles Pour habiter d'autres naissances en latence C'est ainsi que le vent n'habite pas l'espace C'est l'espace d'un instant qui habite le vent On émerge I 
Hyena Bobby. Hyena Ninja. Hyena Bobby. Hyena Ninja. The Mountain. The Mountain. One to cover up. Zamande, ainsi du mouvement, le vent sort du silence Et jaillit, nous semble-t-il, dans le fracas du monde Mais ce fracas n'est que notre surprise à sentir l'existence ce fracas n'est que notre entendement des êtres et des choses qui réclament manifestation. Il nous faut de bruit pour accepter. Il nous faut de bruit pour concevoir l'esprit. Il nous faut de bruit pour accepter la matière. Je tiens du silence le bruissement de la solitude et la racine du vent. L'alluvion des vécus et le limon des vies à naître. J'ai juste à vivre, vivre, tout vivre et tout entendre jusqu'à l'oubli de soi. Le Silence. It was initially planned that Rahari Manana would give a concert in Bayreuth so that the atmosphere and aura of this performance could affect the audience. I hope that the video could at least give you an impression of the interplay of the rhythm of the words of the breath with the melody, rhythm and sound of the valia, as well as the, with those words in French Malagasy. As this example was meant to be embraced by the spectator listener, using the idea of the reason and embracing, I will just give a short analysis of one paragraph so that the reason eye, the analytical eye, might accompany the atmosphere of the performance. Rari Manan speaks of, the ma of a man-bird, Om Wazu, a being in between, a bird of silence, half skin, half feather. The experience of the moment describes the interval that is free to become concrete in different forms in its actualization. And I quote, Here the shadow was light, as the light was shadow, the infinite was ephemeral and the ephemeral was endless. End of quote. And further on, he finds metaphors to transmit the uncertainty of the chaos that obliges everyone to follow the rhythmic trajectories that bring to being momentaneous configurations of tunes, of atmosphere, of meaning. I quote, Drawing a line means to deepen the forgetfulness, as reading means to join the abyss where the vast plane of meaning stretches beyond the reach of the spark of the light. Writing is an illusion that is quite real where the body allies with the spirit in order to push back the doubts, where the breath mixes and blends with the space in order to usurp the churn of the non-accomplished. Have I read well or just invented something? Have I understood well or have I just dreamed? End of quote. The moment of silence seems at first sight not to be compatible with rhythm, music and chaos, but in fact the moment he describes could be the interval where all possibilities are latent and could manifest themselves in various dimensions. 
The poem circumscribes further on what the silence is made of and how the man bird draws on it. And I quote, I take from the silence of the origin of the wind, the entanglement of sighs and desires, a harmonious medley of tendencies and fugues, a conglomerate of gestures and movements, each and every single one every time more splendid and more independent than the others. I take from the silence the noise of loneliness and the origin of the wind, the marsh, marsh of the lived and the loam of the lives yet to be born. I just have to live on everything, on the all, living on all and hearing all of it, up to the forgetting of oneself. Silence. End of quote. Rarimana describes the silence with metaphors and allegories that form a picture of the interval that is inhabited and animated by its manifestations, so that silence, or the noisy interval, turns out to be close to the all world in the sense of glissant. The poem allows the reader to sense the performance and to adumbrate what the interval could mean. It allows to perceive the pauses in the rhythmic flow which relaunches every time into a different or repetitive sequence. Rari Manana also uses photos to accompany his texts. They appear in the flow of the words in some of his publications as a vis visual breach that gives insight into the atmosphere, like for example the photo entitled Flux of a Bark. Flux de Corse. The picture <laughs> seems to hide the figure of a running person, as well as the swirls and vortexes of water or clouds. It draws the spectator into the movement that might also be the flight of the bird in the poem. Or as Manning would put it when she speaks about the painting entitled Mina Mina by the Aborigine artist Dorothina Pangali, and I quote, We take part in the map's durational eventness in an activity of mapping that directs our bodies not toward the representation of Mina Mina, but toward its liveliness. This mapping is a creative vector of experience. It maps the future, leading us toward a recomposition of experience, a collaborative striation that smooths the space of encounter. End of quote. The poem, the music, and the photo by Rahari Manana represent various entrances to this space of encounter. I will now come to my last example before I lose your attention. An example that seems to be more concrete, namely the film Tiranga Blues by the Senegalese filmmaker Musa Sen Absa, who tells the story of a young musician who is repatriated by force from Paris to Dakar. His friend lends him money so that he could join his family. They have been waiting for him for six years to come back and support them financially. To acquire a villa in place of the wooden house and to pay the tuition for his sister. In order to fulfill all the expectations, he accepts to join criminal gangs who make millions out of corruption and blackmail. In the end, he gets killed in the clashes between the gangs. This would be a rather standard plot of young social climbers trying to skip the various steps towards a good life but music plays a central role at various levels of the film, so that the rhythm of the film is enforcing the clash of two cultural worlds in between which, in between which the traveler is caught up. The film director explains in an interview that he always writes first the music and the lyrics for the film and only in a second step the scenario. He further argues that music and songs are an integral part of social life in Senegal, so that for every moment, every concern in the life of a person or community exists some song or music that would accompany this moment. The music would prepare or close it, making the event part of a larger social cultural narrative embedded in music and rhythm. And sometimes lyrics would punctuate the rhythm of the events. The music helps to integrate the moments and the lyrics into the larger context as well as to memorize and transmit them further on. Besides the protagonist being a musician himself, crucial moments come with songs that are performed by members of the community. For example, when he returns home, the whole neighborhood joins to accompany him by singing and dancing. In this way, the moment of return becomes a joyful reception of the lost member, accepting him back to the com into the community. The film, however, places this joyful moment in between the young man being away and his coming back. It is supposed to be a rite of passage enabling the traveler to return home to settle. But in this film, the peak of this performance remains open as an interval almost in the void, as the time before his coming back is reduced to his enforced return in the beginning in the film, while the aftermath is cut short by his death. 
The plot deploys in detail his desperate struggle to fulfill the expectations of his community and his struggle to go beyond the expectations that would allow him to leave again. Therefore, the whole plot shows a moment of in-between that turns out to have loose ends, as the social practices lose ground because the events ha that happen are outside of their logic. The overall rhythm of the film mixes different tempi of the rhythms of the village, of the returnee, of the gangs, which, which strengthens the ruptures and changes of rhythm. Another song with a chorus singing and dancing appears during the meeting of the protagonist with his fiancée in the forest of the Baobabs, where a group of women all dressed in red dance in a circle around them before closing in on them, almost at the end of the film. It is a dreamlike scene that actually announces his death. These two chorus lines punctuate the main story of the returning traveler, suggesting that the rites could help to bring him back as a valid member into the community. But in both cases he is drawn away in events speeding up the rhythm of the film towards the climax of his violent death. The traditional rites slow down the rhythm of the film for an instance but speed up right afterwards, so that the rupture between the two life worlds and their respective rhythms break away from each other. Teranga Blues can be read as a response to a genre film, the gangster film in this case, and a genre of music, the blues, that tells the experience of coming home. It is also the story of the impossible return due to the clashes of two different social and economic systems that run at different speeds and apply competing values. The rhythm of the film transmits this feeling of being lost in between two worlds, two speeds, the past and the future, by using montage to inscribe these elements into the overall structure of the plot. Therefore, the rhythm underlines the structure of the story that can be read as an explanation for conflicts between traditional and modern lifestyles, the economic impacts of inequality and a growing globalized economy. But I would argue that the combination of both, based on the rhythm and the intervals, turn the film into a strong narrative that creates the affecting atmosphere of the impossible return beyond the transmitting of the mere facts, facilitating the apprehension by embracing the experience in its wholeness. I have to come to an end now after this example, and I would like to do so by returning to the quotes which highlighted the importance of the concepts of relation and of the interval, as both also urges to think of what is there to come. And I quote Manning, Relation is making apparent a third space opened up for experience in the making. This third space or interval is active with the tendencies of interaction but is not limited to them." End of quote. At the moment we are living the interval is a slowing down or even the absence of movement to rather rupture, a long pause due to the pandemic. I hope that we can soon meet again to bring together data from various projects combining different approaches that will allow us to strengthen, strengthen the inter and transdisciplinary mediation of analysis of multiple worlds combining the reason I and the apprehension of embracement. And while you now may, may maybe grab a cup of coffee, you might enjoy a sequence of a work I did in co collaboration with the musician Tao Ravao from Madagascar and the choreographer Luis Sala from Mozambique, who performed a piece entitled Body and Sound at the Valiva House in 2016. It could be seen as the fading out of the virtual lecture, a kind of credits after the film that you hopefully enjoy. Thank you for your intention.